Hello and a very good evening to all you 8th graders out there. Um, so today actually we would be dealing with the last bit of the marginalization, rather the confronting marginalization lesson, uh, which of course deals with the demand of the Adivasis and specifically the act of 1989. Right, so I think by this point of time you're aware that the Adivasis are in fact one of the most marginalized communities to exist in India even today as of 2021 and historically also you have understood the fact that they have made forests their home uh, they have been living in it and dwelling in it since since generations after generations and uh, it's always been uh, a place that they call home but you also understand the fact that ever since india has moved to the path of liberalization that is they've opened up their economy uh, there is foreign investment that is now happening in india uh, india has also been affected by globalization to a very great extent you have brands like mcdonald's kfc uh, and the likes uh, that now exist in this country right you also understand that in order for all of this to happen uh, a lot of deforestation so to speak has taken place wherein uh, wherein either trees have been completely cut off uh, in order to make space for new land and then that land has been used to set up factories and so on and so forth right so if if forests are being cut adivasis at the same time are being forcefully displaced from their own lands right okay now of course you realize that we live in a democracy and the constitution guarantees uh, the protection of individual liberties right under the fundamental rights there are a certain set of rights that you're aware of and of course tribals form an integral part of the social fabric of this nation right so of course in order to protect their rights uh, the government that is the central government passed the scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act of 1989 right just like the scheduled castes prevention of atrocities act this is the scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act of course we will not be dealing with the nitty gritties of this act but just let us have a look as to what does it really pertain to right so you realize that since it is prevention of atrocities act uh, a lot of activists who work towards the betterment of the adivasis as well as NGOs who work in this field, right? Uh, make use of this act in order to defend the right of the tribals to occupy land that has always been traditionally theirs, right? So in case tribal communities have been evicted from their lands, they can make use of this act in order to defend that right, right? Okay. And uh, of course, basically it is nothing spectacular in the sense that this act already confirms what is mentioned in the constitution right and that is that tribal people are an integral element of indian society and that land belonging to tribal people cannot be sold or purchased by non-tribal people this is what the act also says this is what the constitution also says so there's not a lot of difference Right. And of course, it is the Constitution of India, which safeguards. And once again, I'm using this word safeguards the rights or guarantees the rights of the Adivasis to repossess their land if it is occupied. OK, so this is repossess their land. Right. If it is occupied by non-tribal agencies. In this light, I would actually like to talk about a very prominent tribal activist, right? And the name of that activist is Mrs. C.K. Janu, right? Uh, so she's a wonderful lady. She's a tribal activist who has been working in this field for, who was working in this field for the longest period of time, right? So I've mentioned here that she was a prominent tribal activist. So she made a couple of observations regarding the state of tribals in India right and one of her very key observations was apart from the multiple violators right there are so many violators who are violating 
the rights of the tribals of this country but one of the main violators who's actually supposed to be safeguarding the rights of the tribals is nobody but our very own state governments right so i've written over here as well so that she observed that one of the violators of the constitutional rights guaranteed to tribal people are the various state governments themselves and that's a very logical and a very valid point because you realize that it is actually the state government which is allowing all these corporate entities and all these non tribal entities to encroach upon the forests right and they are essentially the ones who are passing the bills who are passing the laws to make it easier for industries to be set up in these sensitive uh, sensitive regions where uh, where tribal communities exist right so even i have mentioned in my points as well that the state government allows non tribal entities or encroachers such as timber merchants who cut wood and make take timber from forests paper mill factories which are located either in the forest premises itself or very close to forest premises right and once these industries come in when once these merchants come in or once these encroachers come in you realize that tribal people are then forcefully evicted from their lands uh and of course there is another whole process of state government sometimes declaring forests as reserved protected uh, uh in order to maintain the ecological uh, sanctity of the place or whatever and they could also be declared as wildlife sanctuaries we have also discussed this that an absolute staggering number of tribals have been displaced uh because of our quest to protect wildlife as well it's not a bad thing again i would like to remind you all that preservation of wildlife is critical but at what cost right okay so not only does she argue that state governments are primarily responsible for the plight of tribals in today's country as uh, in today's times she also argues that in case the tribals are evicted for whatever reason x y z they ought to be paid a fair compensation which in today's times is something that you rarely get to see right so that is another another very major problem like a very serious concern wherein tribals who are evicted are not paid or compensated fairly right and it you need to understand that the government actually spends a huge amount of money right in building industries and uh, building projects wherein lands are taken away forests are cut uh, new industries are set up and of course on tribal land basically and why could it the argument is that if all of this money is being spent on building these industries on tribal lands then what is the problem in spending a modest amount on the rehabilitation of the tribals who are evicted from these lands like it is a very very reasonable question that uh, probably only our political masters can perhaps answer right cool okay uh, there is another uh, another act so this was basically about uh, about the adivasi rights and of course uh, uh, the 1989 act right the prevention of atrocities schedule schedule tribes prevention of atrocities act right uh, okay there is another one that was passed by the central government in 2006 i have discussed this very briefly over here as well which is basically the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act okay so pehla wala the first one was prevention of atrocities and this one is recognition of forest rights super important because this act talks about in detail what are the kind of rights that are being recognized as far as tribals and other traditional forest dwellers are concerned right so i've just very crisply mentioned this right so basically the very general idea of this act is that it wants to do away with historical injustices towards forest dwelling populations right so basically all the injustices that have been meted out to them it wants to do away with all those injustices and what are those historical injustices not recognizing their rights to land and resources so that is something that is highly unjust and which has happened 
has been happening and continues to even happen today right so not recognizing their rights to land and resources is something that is almost criminal in nature because of this act right and this particular act gives forest dwellers and tribals the right to use cultivable land in the forest for the purposes of cultivation grazing land in the forest for the purposes of grazing and also gives them access to non timber forest produce non timber forest produce essentially means herbs shrubs medicinal plants honey fruits nuts berries roots you name it right non timber essentially every forest produce that is not wood right timber is wood very simple right so and of course last but not the least it also mentions that the right of forest dwellers includes conservation of forest and biodiversity so they are free to conserve forest protect forest in their own right that is what this act gives to them and they can also conserve biodiversity which is of course their right as well to protect their homeland to protect mm, the places where they live of course how far is this implemented and whether or not we actually follow through because tribals even today continue to get evicted uh the entire problem of nationalism also exists uh wherein there is this huge debate uh about uh, land being taken away forcefully uh, from the nationals and now they're retaliating probably not in the best way because violence is always uh, not the solution to problems but but yeah it is a whole range of debate about nationalism as well and we see a lot of problems happening because of nationalism uh even even to this date right um sure so this sums up the lesson as well congratulations um uh, and uh, we shall probably meet each other for some other tutorial some other time thank you and have a good day